Hi, I'm Hans Wilhelm. In my video called Why Are We Here? we explored the reason for our life here on Earth. We saw that Earth is not our final home, but a school or a college for souls to learn to love again. Today I will go a little deeper into this school curriculum. We will see how we can make the most of this very short visit, so when we leave our physical body behind, we can graduate with honors. As you have seen in my other videos, we are all spiritual beings on our way home to God. And as souls, we are slowly moving through the purification spheres toward that spiritual home. To speed up our journey, we have been given the unique opportunity of short incarnations into a physical body onto planet Earth. In other words, with great likelihood, we have been here many times before in what is called the cycle of reincarnation. Now let's assume that this here is our soul and we are somewhere here in the lower purification spheres. Why would we want to incarnate into a physical body here on Earth? It has a lot to do with our karma, the law of consequences. Karma is everything that we have done against the law of love, all our negative sensations, thoughts, words, deeds, passions, our pressing human desires and so on. Here, in the purification spheres, it takes much, much longer to clear up any karma, because our perception of time is very different here. Furthermore, all the negativity that we have once caused others will be felt here by us more intensely, because we do not have the earthly body that usually buffers any blows and pain. But here on Earth, we have natural healing methods as well as painkillers that can reduce such pain. But most of all, on Earth, we can incarnate and be together with other souls with whom we have some karmic ties and to whom we want to give love, support, help and service. Most souls who decide to come here to this Earth College stay only for less than 800,000 hours. Before they come, they discuss their future life with their guardian spirit who informs them about the lessons they will learn, but also about possible pitfalls, the opportunities, the difficulties and so on. But some souls are not so patient. They are so eager to continue reliving their past earthly incarnation, passions and pleasures, that they push themselves into another incarnation. They are unfortunately poorly prepared as to what they might encounter in their new life in College Earth. So now let's assume we were well prepared by our guardian spirit and have fully agreed to incarnate into a human body here in College Earth. As we leave the spiritual spheres, we are going through what is commonly called the veil of forgetfulness. Everything about our spiritual past and our true spiritual identity will less and less be part of our conscious memory. Why is that so? Because we need to be completely free of any old stuff and tragedies of the past when we face our daily challenges. Can you imagine we would remember all the mess that we have caused in past lifetimes? Such memory would simply paralyze us too much to function in this world. Unfortunately, forgetting who we are and from where we came has a very nasty side effect. We think we now are the center of the universe and everything must rotate around us. This is the origin of our bloated ego. So here we are now in our earthly spacesuit, which is a physical body for our soul. Always good to remember that we are not a body, we only live in this body. Now, what is then the daily lesson plan here in College Earth? What is our prime purpose of being here? The first lesson is freedom, because God is freedom. We learn freedom through self-recognition, freedom from anything that binds us, that is everything that does not come correspond with God's all-forgiving love and all-embracing mercy. This can be persistent unkindness, unwillingness to forgive, ruthlessness, selfishness, negative habits, addictions, and all limiting and stressful beliefs and thoughts, and much, much more. But it also includes our karma. We need to undo and dissolve all negative karma. 
As mentioned in my video on how the planets rule us, our karma is stored in the huge causal computer of the stars and planets that make up the material and fine material cosmoses. These repository stars and planets are in constant movement and when they reach a certain position, they download portions of our karma back to us on Earth. These portions are carefully attuned to the strengths of our soul. These downloads are building blocks that make up a good chunk of our days from moment to moment. It is like a mighty current of energy which brings to each one of us what is relevant to us today to recognize and clear up. Every moment, every second, every minute and every hour of our day is carefully orchestrated for us. Our various events throughout the day are basically nothing other than reproductions of our own past productions. Think about it. What we have once sown is now coming back to us. This can be anything from small sensations, feelings, thoughts to pain, illness, blows of fate and so on. These are the negative aspects that we once fed into the huge causal computer. The law of karma is an ironclad law of the purification spheres. But nothing is too heavy that it couldn't be lightened and dissolved with God's love and mercy, because God's love is the highest energy, and everything else is of lower frequency. The highest frequency influences all lower in fre frequencies and can transform them. Now we also understand why every day is so very different to every human being around the world. Every moment of the day is uniquely tailored for each person to become free again. So the person who cuts us off in the morning traffic is no accident. The disparaging comment by our co-worker is no accident. The unexpected text message is no accident. The argument in our family is no accident. The disturbing news on television are no accident. Everything happens exactly according to plan and our prime task here is to clear up and ready and ra what radiates to us from moment to moment. The law of grace can dissolve all this karma, but we have to learn the lesson first before we ask for grace and divine help. The key is forgiveness. Once we recognize our mistakes and truly repent from the heart our negative behavior and purify it through restitution, forgiving and asking for forgiveness, we will be dissolved in our soul and also in the causal computer. But there's also the law of projection, also called the law of correspondence. It simply says that whatever pushes our buttons in the outside world is something unloved and unresolved within us. Take for instance the TV example I gave earlier. When we are getting very upset about some news about wars, our first question should always be, where am I at war within myself? Or Where am I personally at war with, an, uh, with others in my thoughts, words and actions? This should give us some food for thoughts. If we really want to get to the bottom of this. So all these daily building blocks that are coming back to us from the causal computer are karma, karmic relationships, unloving components, habits, characteristics as well as mirrors to help us clear up everything that is still unloved, unforgiven or unresolved in our soul. I'd like to mention one other form of karma that comes back to us and can severely influence us. That are our thoughts, all our persistent and unloving thoughts. All thoughts are energy and no energy ever gets lost. They eventually come back to us and can totally occupy our mind for hours and days and influence how we feel. A typical example is somebody who has upset us and in our mind we are keeping an inner dialogue of what had happened and what we should have said, what we did say or will be saying to him. Such a thought dialogue can go on for a very long time and as we are totally absorbed in this thought bubble, We are completely missing all the other various daily building blocks that come to us from moment to moment via the day's energy. 
And there is one other danger or risk we take when we incarnate here on earth. That are the negative forces or souls that want to feed on us. They are real. There can be earthbound souls who have only a tiny amount of life energy left and are in desperate need of energy from others. They, are, they use fear and suffering to get these energies. You can learn more about them in my videos on spirit possession, on evil and on the Luciferian doctrine. Now all this makes earth a very tough school for tough souls. It can really look overwhelming, all that heavy stuff coming at us. But this is nothing compared to the gigantic amount of unlimited help for every challenge. Help that each and every one has access to 24-7. That is the whole divine heavens trying to assist us in so many ways. Naturally, we all have our guardian spirit who has not left us and whose prime goal is to assist us through these tasks. But most of all, there is the Father-Mother God who wants us back into the pure heavens as quickly as possible. For this reason, we are given what is commonly called the God spark and Christ spark located in our soul. Remember, our body is the temple of God. Without this immeasurable, powerful, extra dose of divine energy, we could not make it here because the negative, the negative influences are so powerful. So there is a huge variety and amount of divine help available to give us strength and to transform any negativity. But we have to ask for that help and also ask for guidance if we don't understand the messages or signals of the day. And the second lesson of every day is love and service. Every encounter throughout the day is our opportunity to love. That is basically the only lesson that we have to relearn, to love again. And when we love, we also are open to selfless service to others. And these others are not just other human beings who we know and care about. No, it means every human being. Also every animal, plant and mineral kingdom like Mother Earth. All situations and interactions with others we find ourselves in throughout the day are also part of this carefully orchestrated school called daily life. Again, the prime purpose is to reawaken our unconditional, unlimited and all-inclusive love potential within us as well as being of service to others. And Earth is a perfect place where our human weakness and limitations can be transformed into strength and certainty through the application of love. For this we need the interaction with other people. And the best motivation for our inner work is our love for God, the Father, as it is directly connected to our love for our fellow men and women. Love for God can only be achieved by loving everyone. There is absolutely nothing and no one who cannot be transformed and changed by love. Let us also remember that our love for God and fellow humans can substantially improve our own life and living conditions. Loving brings everything into a higher vibration or frequency. It lifts everything, including our own life in every respect. You and my lesson is to love, to love, to love, to love and nothing else. And love always includes loving oneself, forgiveness and helping and service to others. Another great help is the golden rule, do unto others as you wish them do unto you. That is a very practical guidance to learn the lessons the day brings. Whenever we make the right decision, we feel the joy and improvement in life that comes from working with the divine laws. I personally also found the old Hawaiian teaching of Ho'oponopono a great way to get started. By saying the following four sentences quietly in our mind, I am sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. We say this to every human being we encounter. The important thing is to say it with deep conviction. And if that is difficult, we can ask the one who dwells within us to give us unlimited help and strength. Now can we better understand that this amazing drama 
which we are involved in day by day is originated by ourselves and for ourselves. Nothing ever happens to us, only for us. Therefore, by taking 100% responsibility for whatever happens to us and no longer blame others or circumstances, we are improving our life and future. So now you know why I make these videos. Like everybody else, I have to keep reminding myself that my life is a part of an intense curriculum of lessons to which I have agreed to prior my birth. But the most important lesson for all of us is to love unconditionally, unlimited and all-inclusively. There are many books on this subject, but my favorite is Live the Moment by Gabriele. It goes in great detail about everything I have discussed in this video. You can find this little book with its green cover on Amazon. I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon. <music>